Today is June 23rd, 2020, and I have scheduled these last few videos one year in the future. If you know anything about me, I like to play jokes and tricks, and um, I just think it would be funny if anything happens over the next year that all of a sudden I'm going to be posting videos every day again. But let me just say that, you know, of course, yesterday I found out that this was cancer and the type of cancer and... You know, of course, I got the uh, report from the biopsy, and of course, me being a computer guy, I just started Googling the terms that I didn't know, you know, medical terms, and it's uh, not looking very good. <laughs> um I had this open and then I closed it down and then I decided I wasn't going to do a video so I closed it and then I decided well maybe I'll do the video um, but basically it is it says right neck mass core biopsy Moderately differentiated squamous cell carcinoma involving soft tissue and skeletal muscle. And if you look up, so when I talked to the ENT on the phone, that's basically what he told me too. He said it a little bit differently. He said squamous cell carcinoma of the tonsil. He said it is, it was, you know, in the tonsil where he originally thought that it was and then it moved into the lymph nodes in my neck uh, there's the large mass here and then there's the couple lymph nodes that are up here and on the other side also and he said during the you know before the biopsy was done and stuff he said that the tonsils could affect lymph nodes on both sides of the neck, whereas um, other cancer originating other parts of the body would only affect lymph nodes near that place. But because it, it was affecting lymph nodes on both sides of the neck, he was pretty certain it was going to be in the tonsils, and that's what he told me on the phone. So then I get the pathology report. And too many words I probably can't pronounce, so I'm just not even going to try. But, um, so the first thing I did is I Google squamous cell carcinoma of the tonsils. And uh, let me read you part of this, which I don't have up because I wasn't going to do this video. Because I found a page, you know, that really was kind of specific. Uh, it's at Health Engine Com AU, which I get it's another country, but it really has a lot of uh, information. Um, basically, it tells you like what it is. It says uh, throat cancer or squamous cell carcinoma of the tonsils, part of the cancers of the head and neck. In oncology, squamous cell cancers of the head and neck are often considered together because they share many similarities in incidence, cancer type, predisposing factors, pathological features, treatment of the cancer, and cancer prognosis. Up to 30% of cancer patients with one primary head and neck tumor will have a second primary malignancy. So that's like I got the lymph nodes, I got the pain in my shoulder bones, so 
you know, not confirmed yet, but I've kind of like always thought if it was cancer that it was also going to be bone marrow. Um, and it basically just goes on telling you about like other stuff about it. Um, statistics. This type of throat cancer is uncommon and occurs with increasing age. The highest incidence of throat cancer is in the 6th and 7th decades with sex incidence being strongly male predominant. Geographically, the cancerous tumor is found worldwide, but there is significant variation in incidence. The disease occurs with highest incidence in Western European countries such as France. Well, I'm not in France. Uh, risk factors. This type of cancer shows a strong association with alcohol consumption and tobacco smoking. Now, funny thing about that is um, six years ago, I used to drink fairly regularly, uh, generally bourbon. And I used to also smoke cigarettes, but I switched to e-cigarettes. Now, that's really been kind of like over about a 10-year period. Maybe a little longer. I can't remember the exact time period. But I started smoking the e-cigarette while I was still smoking cigarettes. And I used the e-cigarettes to wean me off of the cigarettes. And then I started dropping my milligrams of nicotine where now I buy like three or six nic milligram nicotine uh, e-juice. And for the most part, I smoke the e-cigarette only now. Now, there are some exceptions. If I get really stressed, I'll crave cigarettes. Or, if I get a really bad migraine headache that won't go away, and it's really it's the only time that I get migraine headaches, if I smoke one cigarette, the headache goes away within two or three minutes. And years ago, I asked a doctor about that, and they said that, you know, there's like 4,000 chemicals in a cigarette, and you're probably just addicted to one of those chemicals, and until you get that chemical, it's creating this headache. So... The migraine headaches would usually only happen about three or four times a year. And I generally, you know, would just smoke a cigarette and it'd go away. Um, sometimes I'll crave cigarettes if I'm around somebody else smoking. And so even though I mostly use the e-cigarette, I probably still smoke a couple packs of real cigarettes a year. But it's not like... I used to smoke a pack every day. So I am I do the e-cigarette most of the time, but I probably still smoke a few packs of cigarettes a year, over a year's time. Um, Just due to, like, stress and headaches. Um, there was... One of the things that I wanted to get, that I wanted to talk to you about was, uh, oh, here we go. Early cancer of the throat detected incidentally is associated with a good prognosis. So they're saying early detection, you know, a higher likelihood that you can be cured of this. It says involvement of lymph nodes in the region is associated with a poor throat cancer prognosis. Well, I've got multiple lymph nodes that it's spread to. Five-year survival in early cases is more than 90%. That sounds good, right? But I don't have an early case. In advanced throat cancer, this drops to less than 20%. Um, furthermore, I don't know what that next word is. Some factors associated with cancer of the throat, primarily smoking and alcohol, render survival worse for patients, even with cured or controlled cancer. Um... And basically it's saying that if you smoke or drink after you get this cancer, you pretty much are going to guarantee you're going to get it again. So, 
And then it goes over like the treatment, surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, and that sort of thing. But, you know, that that percentage really kind of hit me hard yesterday. Because when I was thinking it was lymphoma, like Hodgkin's or non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, that's like 85% recovery rate. And then I read about this cancer when they finally actually figure out what it is. And early detection is 90, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's even better. And then I read the next line that it's like advanced, drops to 20%. So it's like emotionally I've just been a roller coaster ride for the last 24 hours since I found out. And, uh, yeah, it's like one minute I'm way up here and happy and normal, like kind of how I am now. In this video and then I just crash and it's pretty much just back and forth like that all day long that's the way it's been like the last 24 hours I probably didn't sleep more than two hours last night because I just laid in bed like why why now you know it's, I set out with these goals to have certain things done in a certain amount of time it was basically I set out to be a hundred percent debt free and 80% self-sufficient, six and a half years. And I'm on track to finish it. I got like 12 months to go. 12 months. And this happens. And I don't know that I'll be here in 12 months.